Okay, so this is the map uh, navigation and GPS workshop, uh, July 30th. So uh, let's maybe start with Google Maps here. So let's take a look at a couple of different type of maps and uh, see what's the difference between each view. So if you go to maps.google.com, this is a tool that I'm using very frequently to kind of uh, scan new uh, forests and mountain ranges and plan the tracks both inside the forest as well as uh, how to reach, I mean, a specific trekking location. So if you look at this, the you have a couple of different views here in uh, Google Maps. One view, the default view, is your kind of route map, right, which uh, basically shows you, depending on your zoom level, if you zoom at, at all India level, you will just see on national and state highways. If you zoom in at a more detailed level, I guess every one of you is familiar, then you will get street level maps so this is very useful right if you want to find a place like say if, if you want to find my place here you can just click uh, you can search any location here you can also easily get directions say you want to drive from uh, this place here say from the palavaka mosque here to say somewhere eh? you want to go to Nagala puram all the way and that's no problem google will tell you exactly how to uh, reach. So, right, so Google can do routing, so you can easily reach like uh, a nearby city to where it's a place, like in this case, Nagalapuram, where you want to go uh, for a trek. But if you look at this view, this default view, if you, for example, zoom in and on this green patch here, this green patch is Nagalapuram. These green patches are typically uh, corresponding to uh, forest ranges. So you see that the map here is totally useless, right? Because there's absolutely, absolutely no do detail here except for the dirt on my wall. There's absolutely nothing useful here. You can even see that even though, I mean, there are like small roads, right? Like rural roads here uh, in Google Maps that uh, nowhere actually, say if you want to go to the Western Entry where we frequently go also for like social treks, that uh, you still have two kilometers of no man's land, how to reach from the most nearby highway to the hills. So, right, so this is like your default map view, which will only be useful whenever you stay on the uh, metal or tar roads. So let us take a look now at another view, which is the satellite view. So I'm just starting from the basics here. I'm sure that many of you have already played around with it, but just to be sure. So if you go to the satellite view, you see much more detail popping up. You still see one big green blob here, which is not go I mean, which will have some amount of useful information. Uh, but say, depending on which uh, part of India you're looking at, you're going to get, I mean, quite a bit of detail. Uh, different parts of the country will have different uh, amount of uh, detail in Google Maps. Here, I think we have something which is good till 200 meters. If you zoom in more, they will just blur up, I mean, zoom up digitally, so you're not going to get uh, a proper view. But you can clearly see in the satellite view, satellite view is basically nothing more than a picture, high resolution pic taken from the satellites. So here you can clearly see that in addition to these uh, uh, main road here, right, this is even I mean, just a rural road, not even a state highway, that you can now see villages popping up. So these uh, places here are uh, villages. You can see the paddy fields. You can see here the, the dam people who have gone to the western entry will recognize uh, this dam. You will see even the tree where we park the cars typically. Right, and, and this is very useful for us because this will give us really, really tell us like in this place you can take a right turn here, follow this kind of probably dirt track which will uh, get you eventually to the dam. So from there even beyond the dam, once you park the cars, you can actually see certain lines here which are not natural, human made lines which corresponds basically to trails. Here you can see the stream which is flowing out of the hills. So this stream is typically a very wobbly kind of thing it will uh, go left right left right so you can easily distinguish from a human made uh, a trail like this one here here you can see trails here you can see an open patch uh, of forest which was cut so typically here that uh, jeep trail that you see here uh, kind of more or less that is the one we will be uh, typically walking on to kind of reach uh, the base of the hills eventually where we'll like you can see our trail here here you're going in a denser vegetation it's getting darker green here and eventually it will disappear because there will be too much vegetation. You can also see that some parts, 
I have low detail. Some parts of India have much higher detail. If you look here, you can zoom up easily to a scale of 20 meters, which is quite amazing. And you can really see individual trees and bushes. And if you go deeper in the hills, you will see rocks, which is right, quite amazing, right? Because you can really detect like uh, trails here. So these are like, I mean, once you get used to this and a little bit trained, train your eye on this, you will clearly kind of identify jeep trails and walkable trails, uh, at least pieces of in, in the jungle, which will help you kind of to at least reach, uh, like say, the base of the stream. I mean, the base of the mountain and the stream. And once you reach Skeki here, you can clearly see a stream. Uh, uh, like, okay, it's not visible, the stream, but uh, you can see denser vegetation here, bigger trees, which uh, clearly indicate the presence of a water stream. Uh, here you can see the split of a stream, uh, clearly. So one stream comes from here. Uh, the mainstream western entry will go that side. Some patches you have clouds, which uh, of course you don't see anything anymore. But if you then follow up, you can uh, clearly you can get a nice view of this hill range in terms of where is the dense vegetation, where you have a more open site, which might be easier for you to trek because it's it's more like a grass or op open rocky patch. Uh, which places are like more dense. So this kind of satellite view is useful to reach to the base of the hill to where you can start your trek and to sometimes kind of identify uh, streams or human-made uh, trails inside the mountain range. So this is the second view which is interesting in Google. The most important view, however, is the terrain view. So if you go back to map, you again get this blank screen. But if you enable this, this will only work up till 500 meters, so you will have to zoom out uh, to a scale of 500. So if you go to the map view, you will have an option at, uh, popping up called Terrain. So if you click on this, you will see a wealth of information popping up now. So this is basically a uh, terrain map, a topo map, which uh, is going to show you a lot of what we call contour lines. Contour lines are basically lines of uh, similar altitude. So, for example, if you would be walking along this thick line here, right, if you would just follow the line, have a GPS, I mean, put this line in your GPS and then just walk along this line, you would be actually walking flat. flat. Of course, it could still be very steep as you would be walking on an uh, incline, but you would be walking flat at an altitude, in this case, of 600 meters. So, in case of this highest level of uh, zoom at final, um, we can zoom out. I think the three highest zoom levels in Google Maps terrain view give you topo contour lines. If you go above that, you will not really see the individual lines anymore because it's too much uh, high of a zoom level. So you'll just see patches of, of mountain range then. So you, you really need to zoom in <coughs> at those three highest levels to see the con those contour lines. So we'll spend quite a bit of time on contour lines because it's very in uh, important to kind of decode the terrain, dec uh, understand the landscape that you are uh, going to start, uh, I mean, exploring or trekking. So the thick lines here correspond to 100 meter lines. Yeah, so whenever I go from, say, this 400 meter line, I walk from here to here, I would have gone, I would have increased my altitude, I would have gone up vertically uh, 100 meters from here to here again, 500 to 600, 600 to 700. In between the 100 meter lines, you can see uh, four individual lines, which will correspond to 20 meters, uh, increases in altitude of 20 meters. Right, and then I think it's very logical to see that, uh, for example, if you're here somewhere, say at uh, the 300 meter line, right, so below the 400 meter line, you have the 300 meter line here. So if you start from here, that uh, say for example if you walk up here to the 400 meter line you can see that you're actually gradually going up right because the distance between my individual contour lines is, is fairly large so here actually you're walking almost if you look at this horizontal distance you're walking um, around 700 meter i guess because it's longer than this uh, scale so from here to here it's it's easily 700 meters so you walk 700 meter forward to climb up 100 meters vertical Right, which is like fairly gradual, that's why one, one by seven, so that's maybe like, I don't know, 12 degrees or something. On the other hand, if you start walking from here to here, in this dark patch here, where the contour lines are very close to each other, you're going to go very, very steep. So these black patches here, these darker shaded areas, uh, which typically uh, enhance uh, those areas where the contour lines are very close to one another, those are the places which are going to be very steep uh, to climb. So these basically we try to avoid in the treks. So before we go more in this, I'm going to just back up and, and go a little bit more. Um, I mean, 
mean explain a little bit more.